<laughs> well, I was quite certain a few days ago that it was going to be green, but it isn't. It's a little bit white out there at least, north of the 401. I'm not sure what it is south of the 401. Somebody was telling me that we, we've got a little more white here than else, elsewhere, but that's all right. We're, uh, we're just thankful to be able to be together, to worship the Lord together, to praise Him and, uh, and celebrate the gift that He's given us through His Son, Jesus Christ. We, I ask you to stand as we sing. And it's an invitation song, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful. Let's sing together. It's amazing that you invite us to enter in boldly to your presence, to the throne of grace. Jesus, we praise you that you have opened that way for us. You have given us that privilege of approaching the Father with confidence that we may receive grace and find mercy in our time of need. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that we can celebrate today and rejoice in all that you've given us. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Once in Royal David City, let's sing together. <laughs>
seated please. I'm going to ask Diane and Jason to come on up here. And June, were you going to play for us this morning, this silent night? Come on up then. Cool. Okay, Jason, you come on over here. We're going to use this mic over here. Jason, stand over here. There you go. And your mom's going to stand beside you right there. Good. All right. We're going to pull that down. Boom. Down a little bit. Jason, you're out of breath. You've been going. You've been going, haven't you? Yeah. All right. Out of here. Just a little bit. So Oh, 
Thank the Lord. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. I don't memorize this stuff anymore. That's right. That's okay. I'm thankful that the Lord did come. Yeah. And I'm thanking and praising Him that we get to come and adore Him. Yes. Today. Yes. And I just love the Lord so much. And I, I know I've said this before, but it seemed like I was so far from God. Yeah. From the way I was brought up. Uh, it wasn't always stable, but that's okay, sister, you little cross on you, heard. But, uh, um, but we had enough when uh, Nelson Peters led us father to come and get us to Sunday school. Mm. And I didn't really, I didn't mind going as a kid. Later on, I didn't like to go. I thought, well, Sunday's a day of rest and I want to sleep. Yes. Okay. You know, I didn't do many harm. And my no. one brother that had been serving the Lord for a long time. He told mom one time, he says, I think you made us go to church too much. Mom said, my reactions are stomach. You didn't go off in that night. No. And you know, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Praise God that he's, uh, we have the, the freedom and the openness to be able to worship together. And uh, we, we need to remember there are many Christians around the world that don't have this opportunity. Uh, they have to meet secretly, quietly, uh, surreptitiously, and uh, I, not just because it's Christmas Eve day. I, I, uh, I don't know. There's something special here. I, uh, the Lord's given us something special here as a church family, and I, I feel it, really feel it today. I don't know why. There's a lot of folks missing today. And so it's not like, well, okay, we've got the most people here on a Sunday we ever had. No, we don't. Um, pray for those who are going through some, uh, some tough times, some people with colds and flus and so forth. There's a, a few folks that phoned me this week, late, uh, late this week, and said, won't be able to be there. And, uh, and so just kind of pray for me. So I've been doing that, but... Uh, and uh, I want to mention again that we are going to be posting our church services on Rumble. We'll start them off uh, still. We'll still have them on YouTube until we get shut down again, until I say something that YouTube doesn't like and they kind of go cut us off for a week. And then but uh, so check us out on Rumble. Make sure you uh, you get over there and, and log in there. Um, it's uh, it's easy to find. So uh, uh, just check that Rumble is a free free speech platform. And uh, I, I appreciate their willingness to, uh, to not do the filters and everything else that... Now, it does mean you find stuff on Rumble that can be quote-unquote offensive. So just ignore that, okay? Don't worry about that stuff. Just find the good stuff and go with that. So, uh, so uh, check us out there, if you will, please. Um, away in a manger, yeah. I wanted to sing that. I don't... I don't think we're having kids' church today. Not worrying about that, are we? Okay. But this is the, the kids' song. Um, oh. Yeah, we like it too. <laughs> I'm sorry? You like the song too? All right. Well, let's sing it all. Let's all sing it together. How Oh. 
there's a song that I've always loved that I get the privilege of being able to sing this morning. Do you have the music with you, Sherry? Oh, no. Joseph's song? Oh, you don't. I guess I'm not singing it this morning. I can't do it tonight. You won't be here tonight, can you? Okay. I just, I thought I had a brilliant idea. <laughs> I'm sorry? Maybe after church, we'll see. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. God has a plan. God has a plan. <laughs> He's always got a plan. Yes, he does. Hey? Um, well, I, no, it was interesting because I'll... Uh, Joseph's song. Let me just read a few of the words here. Um, Joseph's song, and it's a song from the perspective of Joseph being the father to the son of God and raising a king. How can that be? And he says, Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? Show me where I fit into this plan of yours. Father, we've been on this journey of looking at the fact that you have a plan. We looked at Zechariah and Elizabeth and how their life didn't, really didn't move along the way they probably thought and hoped it would. And yet you had a plan. We looked at Mary and Joseph and how life got turned upside down, not quite turning out the way they had planned, but you had a plan. And we've looked at, at the shepherds. We've looked at all of these aspects of your plan. And Father, we thank you that not only did you have a plan 2,000 years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago, you had a plan from the beginning of time, from when we first messed up the whole thing. You had a plan. The scriptures tell us that Jesus was chosen before the creation of the world. You knew, God, we were going to mess up. You didn't stop us because you knew that free will had to be part of your plan. So, God, we thank you. We thank you. Help us to receive what you have today for us, that our hearts may be strengthened, renewed, and challenged again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God does have a plan, and I want to look at the shepherds this morning. In Luke chapter 2, it says there in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be Afraid. Do you know how often that phrase shows up? It shows up over and over and over again, especially in what we call the, the Christmas story. Do not be afraid. It was said to Zechariah. It was said to Mary and Joseph. It was said over and over again. Don't be, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. I... Sometimes, well, not sometimes, a lot of the times my imagination just takes off. I'm, it does. It does. And see, so here's what I'm thinking. Do not be afraid. I imagine the moment the angel spoke those words, all of that fear just drained away. And there was peace. Jesus, Just gone. Just a peace. For behold, I bring you good news. Boy, how much do we need good news? Of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ. That word means Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Well, the shepherds. Someone once wrote this. If our greatest need had been information... God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. 
If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, so God sent us a Savior. Amen. And He sent the news of that Savior, that Savior's birth, to shepherds. How appropriate. Shepherds. John the Baptist declared, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And Isaiah, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Shepherds. What was it that David wrote? The Lord is my shepherd. It, I, I want to try and communicate to you how absolutely radical David writing that down in what we call Psalm 23 was. Because before David wrote that, we're so familiar with that. The Lord is my shepherd. I mean, we've probably memorized that, most of us, since we were kids. But, but David's using that phrase was radical. In his day, nobody had ever compared the Lord to their shepherd. That was a relationship that had not ever been spoken before. David wrote it down. He probably had it in his head. This song, I don't know, maybe he, you know, as a kid, tending the sheep and, and looking after them, defending them, started to imagine how close and how much God cared for him. But he penned these words and it became a brand new idea that had never been written down before. The Lord is my shepherd. And the relationship of shepherd to sheep wasn't just, yeah, this is my job, I got to do it. No, these sheep were not just a livelihood. They were important as far, as far as that shepherd caring for them in every detail of their life. I've said to you before, sheep are not the smartest animals in the barnyard, right? Uh, they have no natural defense against predators. They cannot smell water. So there can be a watering hole 10 meters, 30 feet away, and they can die of thirst unless the shepherd leads them to that water. Hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. And then Isaiah, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned his own way. See, I, Isaiah knew sheep, didn't he? You see, because, well, let me tell you, let me, I told somebody this the other day. I'm going to tell you again. I love this story. So Mr. Fennenauer was probably in his late 80s. He'd had a stroke. He was in the hospital, and a student nurse from Algonquin College up in Pembroke had her clipboard and was going to go through all of the questions she needed to ask to determine how much the stroke had affected his ability to think clearly and process information. So she went down through all the questions and got to the question. She said, now, Mr. Fennenauer, I have a math question for you. If you have 100 sheep in a field, and one gets out through a hole in the fence, how many do you have left? He says, zero. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Fannenauer, think carefully. If you have a hundred sheep, and one gets out through a hole in the fence, how many do you have left? She goes, young lady, you don't know sheep. If one goes out, they all go out. That's <laughs> true. And so when Isaiah says, all of us like sheep have gone astray, Isaiah knows sheep. He knows that if one starts wandering off, they all follow. There's a tendency, and you can see it in our society, people are like sheep just following whatever. All of us like sheep. Now... Isaiah is saying that because of our choice to walk away from God for sin, towards sin. How appropriate then that the announcement of the Savior's birth be made to shepherds. Someone has once said, and I, I, 
I've wanted to research this and I haven't found the, I, I just haven't discovered the, the answer to this yet, but somebody once said that they believe that the shepherds at Bethlehem, because Bethlehem was only about maybe five or six miles from Jerusalem, the shepherds at Bethlehem were tending sheep that were used at the temple for the sacrifices. I've heard that. I don't know if you've heard that too before. But I think, that's kind of cool. What a picture. What a picture then of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, who would become the ultimate sacrifice in Jerusalem. Back to our story. Let's read some more. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 15. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, well, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Well, of course, right? Man. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. Wow. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. I want to focus on five words this morning, very quickly, go over these five words. The shepherds heard, went, saw, told, and returned. The shepherds heard. Today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ, Messiah, the Lord. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. What a contradiction. At least on the surface. The Savior, the Messiah. Huh? Baby? Wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger? Hang on, he, he should be born to noble parents in a palace or at least a home of a prominent family. But in a stable? Yes. By this act, God strips away all human pride and shows us that a life pleasing to him doesn't have to start in the place of privilege or high position, but exactly the opposite. The place of humility is the place to start before God. The shepherds got to see that place of humility. And the shepherds also heard, and on earth peace. How much they needed to hear that in their day, and how much in our day. Peace is one of our greatest needs. Peace between warring groups, yes. Folks, I, mm, I can't avoid it. Let me, I'm seeing posts in the last few days online out of the United States about people taking up their guns. I don't know if you know what happened this past week in Colorado, mm -hmm. but the Supreme Court of Colorado ruled four to three that Trump's name will not be on the election ballot in November. Now, whether it stands or not, it won't stand because it was a complete travesty of justice. The one dissenting judge said he, in 33 years, he has never seen anything quite like this in a courtroom. But people are upset. Now, whether you like Trump or not, that's not the point. Okay, that's not the point. The point is unelected judges deciding who people can vote for. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if this doesn't get resolved quickly, we need, we need to pray. We need to pray for the U.S. We really do. Because there are people talking about starting to organize and pull together. And Wow. You also know that the UN has a statement that they developed in 1961 that says that no private citizen shall own a gun. That was 1961. Now we know 
where the Canadian government is going, and we know where the American government is going. Anyway, how much we need peace. But also peace in the individual. We need peace between husbands and wives, parents and their children, neighbors and co-workers. The list goes on and on and on. Individual peace. More people that you or I might ever realize are searching for peace within themselves. Yes, peace doesn't start there, though. It ends there. Real peace starts with God. That's why the shepherds heard the angels say, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. It starts with the glory of God. And it comes down to peace on earth. True and lasting peace starts in giving glory to God for who He is. Do you know who He is? Do you know what He has done to bring peace between yourself and Him? Do you know the peace that only He can give? I trust that you do. If you don't, ask Him. That was the very purpose of God sending His Son so that you could know and experience the peace that passes all understanding. A peace from all the inner voices of guilt and condemnation. And so the shepherds heard. They heard the good news of great joy, and after hearing it was natural that they would want to go check it out for themselves. They heard, and then they went. Look at the simple faith that moves them. Verse 15, When the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem then, and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. There's no question. Let's go and see this thing. It's happened. Absolutely. No question. These men were simple people who came to see Jesus with a simple faith. If only we too could come to Jesus in the same way, laying aside our sophisticated cardboard exteriors, if only we could throw away our masks of self-sufficiency and adequacy and come to Jesus in simple faith, faith even as small as a mustard seed, we'd be rewarded like the shepherds were. The shepherds went expecting to see the Savior, their Savior, they went with nothing in their hands because they were going to see the gift that God was giving to them. If you would come to Jesus to know Him as your Savior, you have to leave everything behind. All the good you've ever tried to do, all the tears you may have cried over your own sin, whatever it might be, you have to leave it all behind. Nothing you can do or give would be worthy of the gift that God has waiting for you in Jesus Christ. There's a hymn, an old hymn, says, Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. That's it. That's it. Only through simple faith will God's saving gift of love be poured into your heart. So the shepherds, they heard. The shepherds went. And then the shepherds saw. And what they saw was a very ordinary sight to them. A stable. A stable. Probably some animals. We're not told that for sure. I mean, we sing the song, right? The cattle are lowing. We don't know for sure, but, but it was all very ordinary to seasoned shepherds. Yet it was very unordinary. A young couple taking shelter in a stable. A newborn baby laying in a feeding trough. All outward appearances made this scene a very crude one. Here was a young couple who were so poor that they couldn't even afford to bribe an innkeeper for a decent room. So poor they couldn't afford decent clothing for their newborn baby, so they rip up strips of cloth and wrap it up. So a stable has to do for a shelter, smell and all. Hmm. To the natural eye, that's all there was. To the purely analytical mind, that's all there ever is. The five senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. That's, that's all that's real. Oh, I like it when people say that to me. So you don't believe in love, do you? You can't see it, hear it, 
touch it. Well, yeah, I can hear it because I hear somebody say, well, yeah, no, that's not love itself. That's the expression of love. You can see expressions of love. You can hear expressions of love, but to actually physically touch love, it's not. Well, then all of a sudden, they're kind of sure they believe in something that you can't see, touch, taste, hear, smell. Hopefully opening the door for something that's truly real for them. The shepherds saw through the eyes of faith. Oh, they saw a little baby all right. But they saw, too, that he would be king. They may not have fully understood his earthly throne would become a cross and his crown made of thorns. But they knew that one day he would rule. But they may not have certainly understood that he would rule in people's hearts. Dimly, at least, they did know when they saw this little baby that he was royalty from heaven. What do you see when you look at Jesus? A prophet? A moral, ethical teacher? Someone who is distant and doesn't make any difference in your life day to day? Or have you seen Jesus through the eyes of faith? When you look at Jesus, do you see your Savior and Lord? If so, well, then praise the Lord. If not, then there is more for you to see, so much more. Ask God for the faith that can open your eyes and help you to see beyond the physical to the things that are truly real. Paul says, what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Oh, I like that. I like that. The shepherds heard. They went. They saw. They saw with their eyes. They saw with their hearts. But all of this couldn't be contained in their hearts. So they told. They told everyone who would listen about what had happened. Now, I don't know what time of morning this was. Because it was at night the angels appeared. They went into Bethlehem, found... I don't know how long they stayed at the stable, but I again, here goes my imagination. It's just barely sunrise, and they're going around pounding on doors of the houses. You wouldn't believe what we saw! This was awesome! It was angels in the sky, and blah, blah, blah. People are going, what? Just like, wow! They were so excited! Luke tells us in verse 17 that they spread the word. They told everybody they could find what had happened to them. Now, here's a question. Have you seen Jesus through the eyes of, the, of faith? If so, are you spreading the word, the good news of great joy? Oh, but Pastor, I, I couldn't do that. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a theologian. I haven't memorized a lot of Scripture. Okay, just a sec. Who were these shepherds? Were they theologians? No. Uh, were they evangelists? Well, they became. They weren't common, everyday folk. Everyday people. But they heard and saw and experienced Something, something happened to them, to their hearts that changed everything in that moment and from that moment on. Can't you share what you've experienced? Can't you share how Christ has touched and changed your life? You know you can. I know you can. My common response, I've told you this before, my common response, how are you? Blessed. Blessed. And so anytime somebody says that to me in a store, how are you? I say, blessed. Oh, well, that's different. I'll say, well, I am blessed. And I'll tell them, I don't live in Gaza or Ukraine. I've got a God who loves me and a Savior who died for my sin to forgive me. I was in the Napanee Canadian Tire Store. That th it was this past week. And the gal asked me, how are you? I said, blessed. She goes, well, that's a wonderful answer. I said, are you blessed? She goes, 
Yes. I said, is it because of God? She goes, yes. And I go, yeah. All right. We had a little hallelujah moment right there. Jesus. I love that. It's so simple. I, I, I don't go around preaching at people. I just want to share just even a little window for them to know that, hey, if they are a believer, they're not alone. If they aren't a believer, you know what? There's somebody who's willing to talk a little bit about it openly. I've experienced something. I have experienced the goodness of God. Amen. And I want other people to know that too. The shepherds heard, went, saw, and then told. And then verse 20 gives us the next verb. The shepherds returned. This is important. The shepherds returned to what? Well, to tending the sheep. To their ordinary life to what must have seemed maybe like complete drudgery after seeing and hearing angels and seeing a Messiah baby. What about you? You'll return to the ordinary life after the Christmas season, maybe after New Year's. You might even breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> but does it ever feel like the drudgery sets back in again? Does the rest of your year seem anticlimactic compared to the weeks leading up to Christmas? Does everything or anything ever really change because of Christmas? It sure did for those shepherds, didn't it? Verse 20, do I have that one up there? The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen just as had been told them. For them, life would never be the same again because of what they had seen and heard and because of how, what they told others. I, I didn't put this in my notes, but you know what? It's important that we don't skip the part of that they told because when you see and hear something and experience something, when you tell it, it solidifies it even more in your heart and in your life and in the reality of what's going on. When you share that experience, life doesn't need to be a drudgery for you either. It need never be the same again. If you will come and look at Jesus through the eyes of faith to see him as you've never seen him before, you too can go away glorifying and praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Amen. God, you are so good to us, and we praise you. May we be people as simple as shepherds who didn't keep the good news to themselves. May we share that, and because we've experienced your goodness and experiencing your peace, may we be people of peace as well. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing our closing song, 10,000 Reasons. We can just praise the Lord no matter what. Let's sing together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
God's peace and in his love love them love each other and then just be just be who God wants you to be be the church amen God bless you